Greetings from Pintpot. Welcome to my latest edition of Climbing the Curve. The series intended to make you the hunter, rather than the hunted, a little quicker. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Nanite Auto Repair, and whether or not it's worth filling up your defensive slot with this particular ability. So how does it work? Well pretty simple really. It starts healing you up after a certain number of seconds after you receive damage. With the clock being reset, every additional time you receive damage. At rank 1, the waiting time is 12 seconds, and this goes down to 8 seconds at rank 5. But how strong is this ability relative to, say, just jumping out of your tank or vehicle and healing it up using your engineer tool? Well, above I put up a table of how much Nanite Auto Repair heals relative to a rank 1 repair tool from an engineer. So at rank 1, it gives you somewhere between 15 to 40 percent of the performance of a rank 1 repair tool, and at rank 5, somewhere between 30 percent and 55 percent. But you also probably notice that there's a reasonably large disparity in its efficiency between different vehicle types. So let's take a look at it vehicle by vehicle. So let's start with the main battle tank. Above are the details of how much the tank will heal over time based on what rank of auto repair you're using. And below are the numbers for the most common hop out and heal scenario when you're fighting with the main battle tank. If you're going to repair your tank, it usually takes a few seconds to disengage. In addition, it's dangerous just standing outside your tank because it invites people, particularly infiltrators, to come and kill you. So I'm working on the assumption that it takes 5 seconds to disengage and then you heal for 10 seconds. After that, you just hop back in and carry on fighting. So comparing the two sets of numbers, we can come to two quick conclusions. The first is that if you're running your tank without an engineer as your class, then you really need rank 4 or rank 5 nano auto repair for this to be viable. And the second is that if you're running your tank with an engineer and you're getting out to repair at a reasonably regular basis, then running with nanite auto repair, particularly at the lower ranks, makes precious little difference. Essentially, after 20 seconds, to catch up with what rank 1 auto repair would have healed would only require an additional 2 seconds of being exposed repairing with your engineer which in the great scheme of things is not a huge amount. And since the main battle tank is a two-man vehicle, if you're running with an engineer in both gunner and driver, then the nanite auto repair makes even less difference overall. It effectively becomes a bit of a drop in a metaphorical ocean. But these conclusions invite two quick questions. One, why would you ever run a main battle tank without having an engineer? Well, the obvious answer is that by accident, if you're the gunner, if you literally just hop into a passing tank to help gun for them, then the chances are you're not going to be an engineer. And the other is if you're intending to use your tank in a pretty disposable fashion. So you take it into danger, you use it, and then jump out and fight on foot. If this is the case, the chances are you could choose a heavy assault instead of an engineer. And if you make this decision, then running with auto repair makes a lot of sense. But realistically to be viable, you need it up to rank 4 or rank 5. And the second question is, why wouldn't you regularly hop out and top up your tank in between combat? And the answer is a combination of avoiding personal danger and convenience. Tank drivers are specifically targeted when they get out to repair. Infiltrators focus on this, but all classes will take a pop at you when you're outside. Therefore, it takes time and effort to find a nice safe location, or an apparently safe location, in which you can top up your vehicle. With auto repair, you don't need to bother with this nearly as much. Which brings me to the convenience factor. Constantly having to withdraw from the battle just to top up your tank can be quite irritating. So almost as a sense of laziness or convenience if you are to be more polite about it, auto repair allows you to skip a lot of this step for those lower damage attacks. And I say lower damage specifically because in my experience when you're using auto repair, it works perfectly well when you're occasionally being rocketed by heavy assaults, but is effectively useless when you're fighting other tanks. This is because in tank battles you'll receive damage so quickly that you have to get out and repair or destroy your enemy first. In these instances, the auto repair is effectively redundant. So how about for lightnings? Well, the first thing you'll probably notice about the numbers concerning lightnings is that they are far more efficient than the other vehicles in terms of the auto repair. Particularly at the higher ranks, you can top up your tank relatively quickly, even after very heavy damage. Therefore, this makes the Lightning by far the most viable tank to be running without an engineer. 
Whilst in comparison to a main battle tank, which, if it's running with two engineers, the auto repair would make oh. precious little difference to it, the lightning it always makes a considerable difference. Which opens interesting avenues of play, of having say a heavy or light assault within your vehicle, using it very aggressively and then finishing off the attack on foot. Which brings me to the harasser. The first thing you'll notice is that the efficiency of the harasser auto repair is terrible. Even on max rank auto repair, it's less efficient than lightning auto repair at rank 1. So the inevitable conclusion is, if you want to repair up your harasser, do it with an engineer. However, I'd put one caveat on that. Now that harassers are so much more fragile than they used to be, they really need to be used in a different manner. Rather than deciding to use them as a mobile heavy weapons platform, you can use them as just an aggressive form of transportation. Running a group of say heavy assaults and medics to attack groups on the fringes of the battle. In these instances, having auto repair would be quite useful just to top up the vehicle. Strictly with the idea that you're going to be avoiding the main bulk of the fight. As given how weak the auto repair is, combined with how squishy harassers are now, if you head into the heart of the combat you're going to be destroyed very very quickly. So auto repair becomes a useful tool for convenience, but has precious little combat application for the harasser. The convenience being, it frees up your crew not to have an engineer, but to have an alternative class which may be more useful, such as a medic or heavy assault. Moving on to the Sundra, for which there are two specific problems with its auto repair. Firstly, the auto repair is pretty weak, as you can see from the numbers above. And secondly, a Sundra is not a vehicle which dips in and out of combat. They tend to just travel to combat and then deploy. The short range of their weapons combined with their low manoeuvrability just doesn't allow them to dip in and out of combat like you would with a lightning. Therefore there's little synergy for the auto repair to kick in. On top of this, Sundras tend to be nursed by engineers as it is, manning the guns. So in practice, in a Sundra, you're either going to be receiving a great deal of damage, for which is going to be constantly healed by an engineer, or precious little there doesn't seem much room for synergy between the auto repair and the Sundra's function. The only use I can see for this is if you're using your Sundra in a much more passive fashion, deploying further away from combat and effectively abandoning it in a deployed state. In this way it's much less likely to be attacked and if it is it's probably going to be a passing ESF taking a pot shot. In this way the auto repair can top you up after any passing shots are taken on you but you don't suffer so much from the absence of blockade armor or anything else you could put in the defensive slot. Other than for this specific scenario, I would just avoid it on the Sundra. Now when we consider putting auto repair on aircraft, the convenience factor becomes much much more important. This is because you can't simply just hop out of your plane and heal it up whenever you want. Also planes on the ground are incredibly vulnerable to other aircraft attacking them and tanks etc. Or even if you want to repair up your plane then it could take you some considerable amount of time to fly over to a safe spot to do it. So given this it's hard to argue that nano auto repair isn't a great thing on aircraft. So the only question that comes to my mind is are the alternatives sufficiently better that they make up for the increased downtime you'll have with them with increased survivability by equipping them. So let's consider ESFs to start. You will notice that auto repair relative to an engineer tool is relatively inefficient at the lower ranks for an ESF. In addition, ESFs being the fastest aircraft are the easiest to get out of combat and land so that you can repair them manually. Also to consider is the fact that ESFs are pretty squishy. Therefore, unlike liberators in particular galaxies, if they receive damage from a rocket or flak, it's likely to do a large percentage of damage to them, so they're going to have to top themselves up between each engagement. And the other thing to consider is fire suppression for ESFs is very strong. A max rank it heals up 25% of an ESF's HP. So when all of these things are considered, is auto repair that good an attachment? And I think this once again comes down to convenience factor. Even on max rank, if you receive a reasonable amount of damage, you're going to have a decent amount of downtime. However, for all those instances where you just get grazed by passing flak or machine guns, it does mean that you don't have to put yourself down every time just to top yourself up, which does make it very convenient. So definitely not a necessity, but very useful. Now for the Liberator, the auto repair is more efficient than it is for an ESF. Less percentage health, but more in terms of what the equivalent would be in terms of engineer repairing. In addition, being a slower target, you're almost certainly going to receive some sort of damage each time you make a pass at the enemy. However, you can also take a lot more punishment than the ESF. 
as it requires eight lock-on missiles to destroy a Liberator relative to three for an ESF. So what this translates to is when you're attacking ground targets, you're very likely to receive some damage, but it's unlikely to be very substantial. Therefore, in these instances, auto repair is incredibly useful as the downtime on repairing a Liberator manually is obviously proportionally greater than it is for an ESF. However, against aircraft attacking you, this will be of relatively little assistance. And finally, for galaxies. Firstly, the auto repair is pretty efficient relative to an engineer repair tool straight out of the box. Secondly, galaxies have a massive health pool, but they're also incredibly easy targets to hit. Which means in practice that you're going to receive a lot of damage, which won't necessarily do a lot of damage percentage wise to your galaxy. Also, in terms of the purpose of a galaxy, you want it to be staying up in the air over the target so you continuously spawn your squad into it to carry on dropping onto the target. As a result of this, auto repair, in my opinion, on the galaxy is the strongest auto repair by some considerable distance. Auto repair ticks pretty much every box of what you want on your galaxy. Therefore, for newer players, picking up rank 1 auto repair seems to be an absolute first priority when spawning galaxies. However, leveling it up from rank 1 to rank 5 makes, relative to other vehicles, less difference in terms of its efficiency. So rank 1 is a bit of a no-brainer in my opinion, but investing the certs to take it up to a higher rank is less of the priority. So, in conclusion, auto repair is effectively always a useful ability to have on your vehicle. But being useful, and most in particular, being convenient, doesn't make it a necessity. I sometimes think that the convenience factor of auto repair sometimes overrides the better utility you could get from other defence slot attachments. Particularly on main battle tanks where if you have two engineers within the tank, you can heal it up much much faster by withdrawing from combat than you can from relying on auto repair. However, having said that, when you just started with the game, I can hardly see how you could go wrong by putting auto repair on pretty much everything. Now my next episode I'm going to be taking a look at another defence slot attachment, the proximity radar. If you found this episode interesting or useful, please feel free to thumbs up, thumbs down, comment or subscribe as appropriate. In the meantime, have a good one, happy hunting and pint pot out.